Hello, everybody, and welcome to the Gospel Minute from St. Michael's Orthodox Church in Geneva, New York. I'm Steve Toby. And today's reading is from 1 Timothy, chapter 1, verses 12 through 20. And in it, Christ came to save sinners through God's mercy and his grace. Amen. Before we begin, I'd like to remind you all, subscribe to our channel. There's a lot of good resources over there. And... Share this with your friends and your families. Amen. All righty. Before we begin, let's say a prayer. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. And today's prayer is taken from Psalm 67. If you're in the Septuagint, it's from Psalm 66. God be gracious unto us and bless us, and cause his face to shine upon us and have mercy on us, that we may know upon the earth thy way, among all the nations, thy salvation. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Before we begin with our reading, let me give you a little background on Timothy. Paul first met Timothy at a little town called Lystra, and we read an account of that in Acts chapter 16. Let's, let's go over there for just a second. Acts 16. I know, I should have had it marked next time. Here we go. And Paul came also to Derbe and to Lystra. A disciple was there named Timothy, the son of a Jewish woman who was a believer, but his father was a Greek. He was well spoken of by the brothers at Lystra and Iconium. And Paul wanted Timothy to accompany him, and he took him and circumcised him because of the Jews who were in those places, for all knew that his father was a Greek. And as they went on their way through the cities, they delivered to them for observance the decisions that had been reached by the apostles and elders who were in Jerusalem. So the churches were strengthened in faith, and they increased in numbers daily. And that's how Paul met and then traveled on his missionary work with Timothy. Right now. Let us, get my notes straight, let's read from our reading. Chapter 1, starting at verse 12 of 1 Timothy. I hope you have your Bibles open. I thank him who has given me strength, Christ Jesus our Lord, because he judged me faithful, appointing me to his service, though formerly I was a blasphemer, a persecutor, and insolent opponent. But I received mercy because I had acted ignorantly in unbelief, and the grace of our Lord overflowed for me with the faith and love that are in Jesus Christ. The saying is trustworthy and deserving of full acceptance that Christ came into the world to save sinners, of whom I am the foremost. But I received mercy for this reason, that in me, as the foremost, Jesus Christ might display his perfect patience as an example to those who were to believe in him for eternal life. To the king of the ages, immortal, invisible, the only God, be honor and glory forever and ever. Amen. In this charge, I entrust to you, Timothy, my child, in accordance with the prophecies previously made about you, that by them you may wage the good warfare, holding faith and a good conscience, by rejecting, by rejecting this, some have made shipwreck of their faith, among whom are Hymenaeus and Alexander, whom I have handed over to Satan, that they may learn not to blaspheme. The word of God. Okay, Paul calls himself the foremost of sinners. Though formally he says, I was a blasphemer, a persecutor, an insolent opponent. Well, let's read about that. Acts chapter 8, verse 1. And Saul, that was Paul's name before, uh, before he became converted. And Saul approved of his execution. That's the execution of St. Stephen, 
which we read about in chapter 7 of Acts. And there arose on that day a great persecution against the church in Jerusalem, and they were all scattered throughout the regions of Judea and Samaria, except the apostles. Devout men buried Stephen and made great lamentation over him. But Saul, Paul, was ravaging the church and entering house after house. He dragged off men and women and committed them to prison. So Paul, under the name Saul, was a great persecutor of the church. But, he says, I received mercy because I had ignor acted ignorantly in unbelief. And the grace of our Lord overflowed with me with the faith and love that are in Christ Jesus. Two words there, grace and mercy. Now, grace is receiving something, the graciousness of God, that we do not deserve. Grace is receiving something that we do not deserve. Mercy is not receiving something that we do deserve. I think I may have misspoken. Mercy is not receiving something that we deserve. We deserve punishment for our bad acts, but God grants us mercy. Grace is receiving something that we don't deserve, and we don't deserve the good grace of God, his goodness and his acceptance. All righty. So, and the grace of our Lord overflowed for me with the faith and love that are in Christ Jesus. The saying is trustworthy and deserving of full acceptance that Christ came into the world to save sinners. Let's turn to Matthew chapter nine, uh, chapter 9, starting at verse 9. Now, Jesus had just met Matthew and instructed him to follow me. Follow me, Jesus said to him. And as Jesus passed on from there, he saw a man called Matthew sitting at the tax booth, and he said to him, Follow me. And he rose and followed him. And they went to Matthew's home, presumably. And as Jesus reclined at table in the house, behold, many tax collectors and sinners came and were reclining with Jesus and his disciples. And when the Pharisees saw this, they said to his disciples, why does your teacher eat with tax collectors and sinners? Now, tax collectors were considered to be the worst of sinners. The worst, the very worst of sinners. But when he heard it, that is Jesus, he said, those who are well have no need of a physician, but those who are sick, go and learn what this means. I desire mercy and not sacrifice, for I came not to call the righteous, but sinners. Christ came for the sinners in this world. The just men didn't need him, presumably. But we as sinners need the mercy and the grace of God provided through belief and faith in Jesus Christ. Okay. But I received mercy for this reason, that in me as the foremost sinner, Jesus Christ might display his perfect patience as an example to those who were to believe in him for eternal life. As an example, we, you and I, are expected to pay perfect patience. We are expected to have perfect patience with those around us. An example that Jesus taught, taught us in this passage. So, to the king of ages, immortal, immortal, invisible, the only God, be honor and glory forever and ever. Amen. So, a little bit about Timothy, and a little bit, a little bit about the saving grace of Jesus Christ. So, until tomorrow, we're going to take select a passage from Romans. So, until tomorrow, may God bless us all. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Oh, give thanks unto